Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Laura, you're watching the Valentine's, and today I am canning beans. Um, I'm gonna take these dry beans and take them from this inedible farm right to a can of bean, just like the can of beans you would buy from a store that is ready to eat and use in recipes. I'm gonna be starting with black beans, but I'm also gonna be hopefully depending on how the day goes, doing some kidney beans, as well as some chickpeas. Uh, so I'm gonna show you my entire process for that using a pressure canner. If you would like to see all that, please stay tuned. And uh, some of you might be thinking, why in the world would you take the time to do all of this when you can buy a can of beans affordably from a store? Well, for me, there's three reasons that I do this. I'm sure there's more. But these are my three reasons. So the first is going to be um, cost. So this entire bag, this is a two pound bag of black beans. It costs about $2.50. Whereas each can of beans that you buy from the store is going to be somewhere around a dollar or more depending on which brand you get. So this bag is going to make many, many, many uh, jars of beans, cans of beans. Um, I'll give you the, the conversion, how many we get out of it in a second, when I calculate it out. So it's a big cost savings. Um, the second is taste and flavor. So we're using our glass canning jars, mesa jars. So you're not gonna have, like, have you ever opened a canned food and it tastes like the can? Yeah, so that's the second reason. And then the third reason is um, food safety and chemicals. So there's been a lot of press about BPA being in can linings. Um, BPA is a known harmful endocrine disruptor. It is bad for your fertility health. It is bad for pregnancy. Um, now, a lot of sources are saying that the BPA has been uh, eliminated from canning li commercial canning liners up to about 90% are eliminated depending on which source you look at. Um, However, and you know, you'll have to do your own research, but I have seen several sources that have said, well, they took out the BPA, but they're still using a chemical that's almost molecularly similar, which also has um, some negative effects. So even though it's not BPA anymore, they say that the substitution use is not that much better. Now, again, I've read that from several sources I haven't done a comprehensive study, so look that up on your own. But anyway, if for nothing else, for the flavor and the cost savings and just having a lot of these on hand for convenience, that's why I do it. Today, we are using the no soak method to can these beans. So I wanna make a disclaimer about this, especially for the canning police out there. Um, I love to make canning videos. I plan to make a lot more canning videos. I do follow many of the guidelines from the National Center for Home Food Preservation, which will be linked below. And I highly recommend that you follow those methods, particularly if you are new to canning because they are gonna give you the safest, most approved ways to can. Now, some of the methods that you will also see me use are folk methods. So they're not necessarily approved methods according to you know, the modern standards, but they are methods that were used for generations by grandmas and grandpas and they work good for me and my family. I've never had an issue and I mention that because the no soak method I'm pretty sure <laughs> falls under a not approved method so I'm just saying that up front. You can try it at your own risk but if you ever are concerned always check with the National Center for Home Food Preservation for your methods. I do the no soak method because it saves time. It's way faster. It's actually the only method I have ever used and I have been doing it successfully for three years. I have done this process easily 10 times with very large batches. My husband usually helps me and it's worked for us. But, you know, I just want you to know that the National Center for Home Food Preservation guidelines are out there for you guys to check. So the Canyon Police doesn't come for me. Okay, uh, so, with that out of the way, I would like to show you just what I have set up 
basically whenever I can something, it's a big job, I break it down. I try to either set everything out the night before or break it into two tasks, get all of my equipment and tools ready and then start the canning process. So I'm just gonna go through and show you everything that you're gonna need for this. Um, so of course you are gonna need a pressure canner. Uh, beans are one of those low acidic foods that cannot be safely canned with a water bath canner. Uh, I have the Presto canner. I like the large one because we're gonna stack the jars and have two layers of pint jars in here. I've gone ahead and laid out all of my canning tools. I've got my funnel, my jar grabber, and this thing I like to use, it is for like helping to grab the lids, but it's, I use it to get the air bubbles out. I went ahead and got all of the jars that I have laid out. I do have more jars, so if I'm still feeling good, <laughs> um, being on my feet uh, with this pregnancy, then I will can more. I have uh, my beans, of course. I've got all of my lids and rings here in this jar. I do a quarter of a teaspoon of salt per jar, so I've got that set out and ready. Uh, one thing to note, the salt is for flavor only. It actually does not aid in the preservation process. And then I also have out some apple cider vinegar and a cloth, which is gonna be used to help clean the rims of the jars after we have them filled. Not pictured, I have my electric kettle, which I use, it's just over there. And then I always have, um, a colander to rinse the beans and then I use a half cup measure for each jar. So with all of that out of the way, the first thing that I'm going to do is just rinse my beans, go through, make sure there's no defective ones, and then I'm going to fill my jars um, with a half a cup each and each jar of the beans. Now why is this really important? Okay, uh, and this is why it's probably not an approved method. Beans expand when they are hydrated. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing them hydrated under intense heat in the pressure canner. So what starts in the jar is only up to, you know, half a cup is going to fill the rest of the jar. Now, what happens when you put too many beans in the jar? It explodes inside of the pressure canner. It explodes from the inside out. Um, so that's why, uh, Half a cup, never more. It is a safety concern. Probably why this isn't an approved method. Um, but you'll see, I've done this many times. And as long as you stick to that and don't go over that, it expands and there's plenty of room left in the jar. So, safety first, guys. Okay, I've rinsed these beans well. Come through them with my fingers, make sure I've taken out any impurities or anything that's not supposed to be there. And I'm just going to fill my jars uh, with half a cup each. I like to work from the back and move forward. Oops. Okay, so for the price of two prepared cans of beans from the grocery store, we are gonna be getting 11 cans of beans home. So great cost savings, like I mentioned. Now I do have um, some extra jars, so I am gonna go ahead and rinse my kidney beans and add my kidney beans to this uh, batch as well. Okay guys, so we ended up getting 12 cans of kidney beans from the two pound bag and 11 cans of black beans from a two pound bag. Um, and each one, each of the jars is filled half cup. Like we talked about, plenty of room for these to expand. And um, my husband was just saying, if you do the math, it's gonna be around 25 cents a jar after, after tax. Now, of course, that's provided you already owned a pressure canner and a, um, a bunch of jars, which I did, because I've been canning for several years. So there is an upfront cost in canning, but it, you quickly make up for it if you're making a lot of your own food for the reasons that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So all I'm gonna do now, because I actually have to go to the grocery store and pick up a food order, 
I am just gonna put a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in each one of these. And again, it's just for flavor, so you don't have to add it. It does not aid in the preservation, but we like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna take a break and come back and we'll actually fill these with water and start the canning process. So I'm back, I got my groceries, I got them put away, and now I'm ready to move forward with canning these beans. So the first thing that I'm going to do is apply some heat to my pot. And I'm doing this just to get the um, pressure canner hot. So we'll be adding hot jars to a hot canner, and we just wanna bring the water up to a boil. There's about three inches of water in here. Again, if you're new to pressure canning, you don't have to submerge the jars in water all the way like you would in a water bath canner. You just need enough water to create steam and pressure. So I'm gonna have my weight off and over to the side and I don't even have my lid lock. We're just getting the canner hot right now while we prepare the jars. So in order to prepare the jars, I'm gonna use the help of my electric kettle, but you can use a conventional kettle, any boiling water. Some people like to do a big pot of boiling water and ladle the water onto the beans. I just find that using an electric kettle is the easiest, and we're gonna uh, take boiling water and fill up to about the rim so that we still have half an inch of head space in each one of these. After I fill each one to the top with water, I take this tool, you can use a wooden spoon, whatever, and you're just going to go around the edge of the jar, tapping in it, and that is gonna get out the air bubbles. This is an important step because the whole concept behind canning is that the heat and the pressure forces all the air out while simultaneously sterilizing the ingredients. So you heat sterilize the ingredients while also making a vacuum seal, which keeps everything preserved. And just doing this step helps to get any air bubbles out before you can. It helps the process along. I have forgotten to do it in the past and it still worked out fine, but why not if it's such a simple step you can take? So as I get each one filled up, I am gonna go ahead and take my apple cider vinegar and just onto a kitchen towel here Put a little bit of vinegar onto the towel and then wipe the rim. And we're just wiping the rim because this seal on the can, see that liner around the edge? That's gonna seal directly with the top. If there's a, the top of the jar, if there's a piece of salt or anything that obstructs, obstructs the seal, it won't seal. So that's why this is actually, I would say, one of the most important steps of the whole process to make sure each jar seals. And then from there, you can go ahead and put on your lids and rings. Um, another thing that sometimes people get confused about is when you're pressure canning anything for at least, whoops, I think it's 10 minutes or longer, you do not have to sanitize your lids and rings because a pressure canner is uh, is gonna do all that for you. It's a very powerful tool. So I'm just gonna continue this process for each jar till they're all done. Adding the water, uh, getting out the air bubbles with the stick, uh, going around the rim to make sure there's nothing obstructing the seal and putting the lid and ring on. That's it. These only have to be tightened finger tight. In fact, you don't wanna really tighten down on them too much because you want the air to get out to create the seal.
Our last jars are prepped, so they are ready to go into the jacuzzi now. Our pressure canner, you might be able to hear it jiggling, it's already nice and hot. So we're gonna be careful getting the lid off. There's a lot of steam coming from it. As you can see, I've already turned this down to medium. And then we're just gonna use our jar grabber and get them in. We're gonna do um, two layers. I always forget how many pint jars I can fit in here. <laughs> so I'm excited to see. So I'm gonna double stack, I'm gonna do two layers of jars in my canner. So for that, I'm gonna add another, um, I don't know, a rack in between. I used to never do that. In fact, I can for years without doing this, but then someone commented on my last video when I can a year's worth of salsa, which I'll link if you're interested in that, uh, they commented that I should never stack the jars directly on top of each other. So I looked into that and indeed they say you shouldn't do that. I never had a problem with it, but I figure if it's a safety measure, why not take it? So now we're adding another layer. Okay, I was able to fit 18 jars in my canner. That is awesome. So next we're gonna get our lid on. There is, a, with the Presto canner, there's an arrow that helps you line up and then you lock the lid into place. Okay, so for the next step, we're gonna bring this back up to a boil and from this little vent here, it's gonna vent steam for 10 minutes before we move on to adding the pressure gauge. And I think, because I'm feeling good, I think I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a second batch of jars. Uh, that way I can get the pinto beans uh, done today as well. We eat a lot of beans. We love the black beans for like taco bowls. We make a lot of black bean burgers. We love it for, we put black beans in our chili. Of course the kidney beans we do for our chilies um, and other soups. And then pinto beans, I love them for refried beans make a lot of those. I make molletes, um, it, which is a classic Mexican breakfast. It's refried beans over toast. Um, if, if I had more, depending on if I have room and time, I will do some chickpeas as well because we eat a lot of hummus. <laughs> so, so we are bean eaters and especially in my pregnancy, I have had real aversions to meat. Um, which has been not too bad for me because I used to be full vegetarian, so I already have a lot of great vegetarian meals on deck. But yeah, anyway, go figure. A lot of people talk about cravings in their pregnancy. I've just had a lot of aversions. <laughs> okay guys, the canner has been venting steam from the top vent for 10 minutes. So now we're just going to add the pressure weight on. And now we're going to wait till our dial reaches 11 pounds of pressure. We'll be processing these at 11 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. So we wait till the dial comes up to 11 and only then do we start our timer for 75 minutes. So this, the amount of pressure and time varies on, a, on several factors. It's very easy to find out what you need to do for, for you. Um, it's gonna be different time and pressure based on your altitude, what you're canning, and what size jar you're using. So this is an area where I would encourage you to go to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, type in beans. There will be detailed instructions on how to can beans, but also a chart. And you'll look up your altitude, the size of jar you're using, and then how long it will tell you how long and what pressure to do this at. So we will wait for this to climb to 11 and then start our timer. After 75 minutes, 
I will be so excited to show you guys the finished product, some shelf ready beans. Okay guys, it's been 75 minutes and it's important to note that when your timer goes off, all you have to do is turn off the heat. You don't want to mess with the canner, remove the weight or anything like that. You're just gonna turn off the heat and wait till the pressure comes all the way down to zero on its own before removing the lid and the jars. This is of course a safety measure. Um, it will also help to avoid any jars leaking or um, you know, sudden pressure changes. So when the timer goes off, just turn it off and it does take another 20 to 30 minutes for the pressure to come down naturally. Okay, the canner has come all the way down to zero pressure. So we're gonna open it up here. Gonna get some oven mitts. Ooh. Awesome. Take a look in here. They look good. So I've got plenty of space in here. There was no um, danger of them exploding or overfilling the jars. In fact, I could have done a little bit more beans, like maybe like a little heaping half a cup perhaps. But anyway, always better to be on the safe side. Yeah, these look great. Now this is where over the next, you know, 20 minutes to an hour, you'll start to hear the ping of the seal locking down. And that's that awesome sound that we, everybody who cans loves to hear. It tells us that the seal has worked and we have a wonderful uh, shelf stable product from all of our efforts. But these are hot as the Dickens, so just be really, really careful. And now that I've got those out of the canner, I'm gonna turn the heat back on and we will proceed with canning our second batch here. This batch has the chickpeas. Well, actually it's a blend. I've got some kidney beans, some pinto beans, and some chickpeas. <laughs> so these are the chickpeas. They've already expanded because I put the um, hot water on them about an hour ago. Pinto beans and then our kidney beans. And they will, of course, expand even more as we can them here. Hi guys, welcome back. It is the next day and here is all of the fruits in my labor, my beautiful cans of beans. So the information that every canner wants to know is what was our success rate? So how many cans sealed and how many failed to seal? Well, I am so happy to report that out of 35 cans of beans, I had only one can of pento beans that did not seal, and that is okay. All you do is go ahead and pop it in the fridge and eat it in the next couple days. So it is not uh, ruined at all. Problem solved. Actually, I did want to mention to you guys how you check if your can is sealed or not. So. Very important, you always wanna wait till the next day. You don't wanna check them until they've been given enough time to seal on their own because if you push down on the top with your finger, you can create a false seal. 
But so the next morning, um, all you want to do is, is just press on the top of every single can. Um, and if it's firm like this, you don't, you, there's no give at all to the lid and you do not hear it pop and it's sealed. If the lid, if you can press it up and down and there's give and movement there, it's not sealed. Or if you press it and you hear it pop, it's not sealed. So those would be the ones that you would want to refrigerate and consume immediately. And it makes that vacuum seal. So as you can see, uh, and then you can take off the rings for storing. The rings are not needed because the seal is created between the top, the lid, and the jar. Okay, so I ended up with uh, nine jars of pintos, 11 jars of black beans, and 12 of kidney beans, and then I had just enough room in my canner for two uh, chickpeas. Um, and if you take a close up look at these, see how we started with a half a cup in each pint and it really did fill the jar. Um, and that there was plenty of room left for safety. In fact, some of these could have been filled a little bit more. So that's it. You know, canning is always a little bit of a chore, but something I love to do because these are going to last us so long for our chilies, our soups, our refried beans, our taco nights. Um, I just, we eat a lot of beans over here, our hummus. So it's just going to be great. So, um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe. I've got more canning videos on my channel. I have recipe videos, tons of gardening videos and herbal preparation videos. So all things homegrown, homemade here. I totally appreciate you spending your time with me and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. All I have to do now is label these guys and get them put away.